In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the full range of APIs available for web storage. In this particular lesson, I'm going to use local storage, but the example would work equally well in session storage because the API is exactly the same for local storage and session storage. Obviously, the only difference is how the data is actually stored internally, but the API itself is identical. So let me run you through this example. I have two text boxes where I can enter the name and the value for anything I want to store in local storage. So first of all, I'll enter a key name such as favorite color. And my favorite color is red for Wales. So I'll click store item like that. And a message box pops up to confirm that in local storage, an item whose key is favorite color and whose value is red, that's been stored in local storage. Okay, I'll add another item, favorite team. And my favorite team is Swansea City, playing the English Premier League. So I'll store that item as well. And that's been stored. Now, when I click display items, it displays a bulleted list of all the items, but there are four items rather than two. And that's because in the code for this example, just for illustration purposes, I've pre-populated local storage on startup with these two items initially, just to show that you can do that if you want to. And these are the two items that I've just added in, in the demo. So if I click count items, then it shows me there are four items in local storage. I can remove a particular item. If I click this button, it'll take this key and it'll remove that item from local storage. So I click remove item. And then if I display the items again, you'll find that favorite team has been removed from the list. If you want to remove all items, then I'll click this button and it'll wipe out all of local storage. So if I click display now, then it's empty. Okay, so that's the example. Let's take a look at the code. First thing to point out is that the web page is actually being run through a web server. I've run it through localhost, which on my machine is Microsoft IIS web server. So this file here, I've copied onto the Microsoft IIS web publishing folder. So that is here, inetpub www root. That corresponds to localhost when you run in Microsoft IIS. And again, it doesn't really matter which web server you use for this example, but you really do need to run it through a web server rather than just running the web page directly from the file system. So let's take a look at the code for that web page in Komodo Edit. Um, let me first of all take you to the bottom of the example, which shows the actual web page itself. And uh, as you can see here on line 75 and line 76, I've got two text boxes. These are where the user enters the name and the value for an item. So if item name might be favorite color and item value might be red. And then we have a range of buttons which illustrate the different APIs. And then a message area which displays the list of items in local storage. Now, when the window is first loaded, I have some startup code here. And startup code sets up event handlers for all those buttons. And it also calls a helper function, add fixed values to storage. So let's take a look at that first. So here it is on line 10. In here, I've shown two different syntaxes for inserting an item into local storage. You can either call the set item function and give it the key and the value, or you can just say dot property name equals value. Okay, so these two statements are equivalent. You can use either one to insert an item into local storage or session storage. The API is the same. The store item function gets invoked when I enter some items on the web page. So we get the item name, like favorite color, and the item value, like red. And then it uses the set item function again to store the item name, favorite color, and the item value, red. And as earlier, you can use the square bracket syntax if you want to, to insert an item into local storage. So that would work as well. Now, local storage and session storage also have a length property, which tells you how many items there are in local storage or session storage. And also we have a remove item function where you specify the name of the item to remove, like favorite color. And then the remove item will erase that item from local storage or session storage. So it doesn't just get rid of the value, it gets rid of the key and the value as well at the same time. There's also a clear function 
which will remove all items from local storage or session storage. Okay, great. The last thing to look at is how we can display all the items in local storage. So what we do here is we get the count of items, first of all. So there were four items when I ran the example. And then you set up a loop that will iterate round four times. Each time around the loop, you get the next key. Okay, so you say local storage or session storage dot key and you specify the index of the key. So that will get first time around the loop, that will get key zero. Next time around the loop, it'll get key one. Next time, key two. Next time, key three. So each time you get a key, it'll be something like favorite color. And then what you do is you get the value of that key, like so. So get item, and you specify the key, like favorite color, and it'll give you back the value of that key. So if the key is favorite color, it'll give you back the value red. And then we display that in a list item in a bulleted list. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. Let me just summarize what we've seen in the APIs. Well, first of all, you can use the set item function to insert an item into local storage or session storage, or you can use the square bracket syntax if you want to, or you can use just the dot syntax if you want to. So several different ways to insert an item into storage. There's a length property to find out how many items there are. There's a remove item function to remove a particular item from your storage area. And there's a clear function to remove everything from the storage area. And then there's a key function to get a key and a get item to get the value of that key.